Welcome back to the Westminster Dog Show, brought to you by Curiosity Stream and Nebula, which you can sign up for less than $15 a year down at the link in the description. We're in the final round now. First up is a beautiful sausage dog handheld by Enyi. And now we have a very beautiful German Shepherd named Dakota handled by Tyler. And now we have a first time contender, Ragnarovich the Ceaseless Legged with, uh, Hiccup the Frog. It looks like the judges have instantly declared Hiccup the Frog as the winner of this dog contest. The first time in history an animal that isn't a dog has won the Westminster Dog Show. Why did I enter this dog contest with my frog? I just really wanted to deconstruct the notion that people are the only ones who ever domesticate animals. Ragnarovich the Ceaseless Legged is a Colombian lesserback tarantula, one of the few animals outside of us people who have arguably domesticated another animal. These big fluffy spiders have formed a beautiful friendship with tiny frogs, especially the itsy bitsy dotted hummings frog who are found in the leaf litter and swamps of the South American tropics, and in and around the burrows of Ragnarovich and her friends. Colombian lesserback tarantulas live and raise their young in burrows, and dotted humming frogs often take their residence inside of these burrows. A burrow can be home to several pet frogs, two or three or potentially upwards of even a dozen. And at only two centimeters long, these frogs are dwarfed by their tarantula hosts, who can be up to six to seven centimeters long and 19 to 22 centimeters wide. Their size difference is like a human standing beneath a circus tent. And these cute little frogs often do stand under their hosts. Researchers found that when frogs emerge from outside their burrows, they often dart directly under under their tarantula friend, using them as a sort of cover. Throughout the night, both frogs and tarantulas sit near the mouth of the burrow and wait for prey like moths or small bugs to come by to eat. When researchers move too much or flash too bright of a light at the burrow, the frogs would scurry beneath their tarantula pals, just like how cats zoom under couches whenever the doorbell rings. This leads scientists to think that dotted humming frogs are attracted to these tarantulas not just because they can hide in the spider's burrows, but because the spiders themselves also act like gigantic guardians. Frogs seem hesitant to leave a burrow if a guard spider isn't outside. Frogs came out alongside or after the tarantulas did on all except for one night that the researchers observed them. Adult female tarantulas are known to be fiercely protective of their nests and their young, and Colombian lesserbacks are no exception. In one study, a researcher introduced a poor little garter snake to an enclosure full of tarantula burrows, and the garter snake was repelled by these angry ladies. And also inside of this enclosure were frogs. The snake ate plenty of frogs, but it was unable to munch on any that took refuge in the tarantula burrows, since the spiders fiercely guarded the entrance and thereby also the frogs. Even when an almost meter-long snake was dragged past a burrow, the tarantula dug her fangs behind its head and then attempted to drag its body that was about five times longer than her own down into the burrow. Obviously, tarantulas are fierce predators, but why don't they just eat their frog roommates? Well, actually, if they could, they probably would. Young tarantulas were observed trying to pounce on them, however, they would quickly relinquish them. Maybe they recognize the taste or smell of their little friends, or maybe the taste of the frog is just so revolting that it thwarts them away. Just like how poison dart frogs taste bad, in addition to being poisonous. After observing these frog and tarantula burrows, researchers wondered whether Colombian lesserbacks were simply disinterested in frog hunting altogether, so they dropped nine other little frogs from different species by a tarantula burrow. Once the tarantula spotted each of these frogs zipping by, they'd immediately catch it and usually devour it alive. So, obviously, there's something special about the dotted humming frogs, but what is it? Some scientists suspect that their relationship is commensal, or perhaps even mutualistic. Commensalism is a relationship wherein one party benefits while the other party is neither benefited nor harmed. For example, humans and raccoons have a mostly commensal relationship. Raccoons benefit by eating our trash, and since most of us aren't too attached to our trash, we aren't really affected either way. However, if you're a sanitation worker, then your relationship with raccoons would be more mutualistic, because they get to eat while they also help you out with your job. So, it's obvious how frogs benefit from the tarantulas. They get a safe space to sleep and hunt. And plenty of different frogs have figured out that tarantulas can be good friends. Western narrow-mouthed toads can be found in the dens of Texas brown tarantulas in the South Central United States. And they provide not only protection, but also a damp place to stay throughout the drier months. 
the Tangara frog in Mexico and Central America also forms relationships with tarantulas. And similar friendships have been spotted between microhylid frogs and tarantulas as far away as Sri Lanka and Madagascar. But it's tough to tell how tarantulas benefit from this, if at all. It might just be that they've learned frogs taste nasty, so they just don't even bother hunting them. Maybe they just think they're cute. Or maybe these frogs provide a service of their own to the tarantulas. Tarantula eggs are susceptible to being eaten by ants and other pests, which tiny frogs happen to like to eat. So they might just be kept around as little pest control agents. And observing the relationship between frogs and tarantulas can give us insight into how Neolithic humans developed a relationship with cats. No, they didn't defend our young from giant baby-eating hamsters, but if you look inside of the cheek pouches of ancient hamsters, there's something in them that's even worse than baby-eating, and that's disease. The most important byproduct of agriculture was a surplus of food, and these stocked-up larders not only fueled the rise of human civilization, but also attracted rodents, and by extension, the diseases that they carried upon them. Cats, as it happened, like to eat rodents, and they enjoy our warm homes for raising their kittens. Naturally, the ones who were drawn to us in the first place were the most amicable towards humans, and then over time, a more and more domestic lineage emerged from them. It'd be fascinating to see if there's a genetic difference between the microhylid frogs that live in tarantula burrows today and those that live in the leaf litter on their own. Maybe in a few millennia, there will be an entire separate species with enough breeds for tarantulas to have their very own Westminster Frog Show. Who are the frogs? They're self-made millionaire and billionaire investors and entrepreneurs. Mary Phillips is a real estate mogul who turned a $10,000 loan into a mini golf course empire. Enrique Gomez went from running a lemonade stand to monopolizing the steel and railroad industry. And finally, there's billionaire playboy Hiccup. He didn't really do anything. People just love him so much, they keep giving him money. Next up is an innovation on everyone's favorite food. I love hot dog water, but making it out of the wieners is so much work. Introducing hot dog tea packets. Okay, well, next up is a new app that you definitely don't want to miss out on. How many times do we have to tell you insolent peasants you can't look us in the eye? All right, who's next? Hi frogs, everyone likes watching shows, but no one likes feeling like they're wasting their time watching them. What if you could watch incredible shows and also learn? Look no further than Curiosity Stream. Interesting. Who are your distributors? Right now, we've got thousands of nonfiction and documentary titles streaming. And what about nature documentaries? We got dozens of them. One of my favorite documentaries on Curiosity Stream is Hot Tuna, because it reminds me of hot dogs, my favorite beverage. No fair, you've been shooting everyone. Luckily for you, frogs, this deal doesn't only come with Curiosity Stream. When you sign up, you also get a subscription to Nebula. Tell me about this Nebula thing. Who are your partners? We partner with everyone's favorite smart indie creators, and on Nebula they release tons of exclusive content. The Grail Engineering's Logistics of D-Day series? Yeah. Wow, he's so dreamy. Uh, sure, and there's also Real Life Lore's Modern Conflict series. He's dreamy too, right? Um, I don't Not know. really. Anyway, what's your buy-in? For a subscription to both Curiosity Stream and Nebula, we're asking for less than 15 bucks a year. I'm in. Nice shot, Enrique. See all Bioark videos early and ad-free on Nebula. Sign up for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula by clicking the button that's on screen right now for less than $15 a year.